Hey guys, on this video, we're gonna figure out what makes use of a roadkill raccoon before and after bludgeoning it with an ax to liberate the calories. All right guys, I had to jump into the cabin real quick. There's zombies everywhere. Just kidding. I'm gonna introduce my sponsor for this video, Life After. It's a lifelike immersive game where there are zombies everywhere. I love zombie movies. I love zombie the zombie TV series. I've mentioned before that I would love to actually just jump into that TV series and live the life of survival every day. I know I'm kind of weird that way, but how awesome would it be if you could just go in and out like the game, right? Not permanently. This video is sponsored by Life After, a highly anticipated survival mobile game featuring immersed and lifelike survival experience, zombie fighting, hunting, building, and camp-based collective cooperation. Kind of like the things I do in my video, except more zombies. The English version of Life After is available now. Download links in the description below. We've got Ricky the raccoon hanging out in the tree here. Now the subject of this video is not gonna be about this raccoon, but a different raccoon I actually found out on the road. But I wanna introduce this raccoon first because this is a pivotal raccoon in our experiment. So I've noticed while working on the small cabin in the woods here, that this raccoon has been scavenged upon by some really interesting creatures. Some things you might not expect. Chickadees have been landing on this raccoon, crawling inside the raccoon and picking out little bits of fat. Not surprising, right? Chickadees have a high metabolism and they gotta keep on top of their winter calories. So what better way to do it than a raccoon? But the thing is, I had this other raccoon I picked up off the road as roadkill and it hasn't been scavenged upon at all. Let's go over, check out this raccoon and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's Ricky the raccoon number two. It's a fully intact raccoon, got hit by a car. I pulled it out while it was a bit warmer temperatures, set it up here and it's been here for three weeks now, completely undisturbed. And my theory is, and we're gonna be running a scientific experiment. My theory is that no animals can make use of this raccoon because it's whole. So thing is guys, in order for an animal to make use of it, it has to break up into small pieces and that takes a lot of effort and energy. Not a lot of animals are capable of doing that. Some people correctly pointed out the last time I raised this issue that wolves could do it. That's true, wolves could do it. Probably coyote too. Um, we're not in an environment that wolves are present so they can't make use of it. This animal specifically, uh, because of the location, because of the environment that we happen to be in, but there are coyote, coyote around in three weeks. After three weeks of having this raccoon here, not one single coyote or any other animal has disturbed it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, an ax, I'm going to break this into small pieces to make the energy liberated for other animals to come in and eat. We're gonna set up a trail camera and we're gonna see what makes use of this animal once it's been broken apart by tools that are accessible to people. So the experiment that we're talking about here, whew, that's a nasty looking animal. So the experiment that we're talking about here is if animals could use tools like humans can use tools, they'd be a lot better off. They could liberate the energy stored in this animal and make it use for themselves, especially in climates like this where the animal is completely frozen solid. So what I'm gonna try to do is use the ax and break it up into as many small pieces as I possibly can, put the trail camera on it, and we'll see what animals can actually come in and make use of it. My guess is probably we're gonna see the scavengers come in. I'm hoping to see a coyote. I'm not positive we'll see one, but we might. Um, I think we'll see birds, we'll see crows, we'll see chickadees, we'll see little animals like that come in and uh, make use of it. We might see the odd coyote come and take half a peek and see if there's any small pieces for them to grab. So let's get busy breaking this animal up. All right guys, you may think that it's disrespectful to the animal to do this, but you wouldn't think a wolf smashing its teeth up and eating it would be disrespectful. I'm doing the wildlife a favor here. It's difficult to make a living in the winter time. So by smashing this animal up, I'm actually continuing the cycle of life. Now I could let nature do it by itself, but I do believe people are part of nature and we do form an integral part of the cycle of life. So all I'm doing is liberating the nutrients from this animal earlier and at a time when the animals, the other animals can make use of it. So let's get, let's get on with this. We're not desecrating an animal, we're liberating the energy for other animals. Whew. 
that's a lot of work. But all the nutrients are completely and 100% liberated. You can bet your bottom dollar that animals wish that they could produce and wield an ax because it makes short work of something that would not be available otherwise. Let's get this trail camera set up. All right guys, got a spy point trail camera, got solar power at the top. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna make sure it's set to on. And then we're gonna set the video mode because that's gonna give us the most amount of information. So we're gonna go switch down to start camera, video, and the camera is gonna be ready in 30 seconds. So we've got 30 seconds to get out of the way and let's, let's see what happens. There we go. All right guys, before we leave for the night, I got some giant stakes. I'm gonna spike it into the ground and make sure that nothing steals it and we catch it on camera. There we go. Now we wait and we'll come back and we'll see what makes use of our liberated energy from Roadkill Raccoon. We walk through it on the way out. We're gonna make a nice scent trail. Those animals are gonna smell it right back to the kill. All right guys, it's been about a week. How long in the week? About two weeks. Don't mind my drippy nose. My nose always gets drippy in the winter nose drippies so yeah it's been about two weeks since we put the camera out and the raccoon uh my brother said he got some news about it. he come, came down to check it's on his property by the way so he uh came and gave me the scoop on it. he said there's been some activity so let's go check it out i don't want to disturb any of the tracks uh so far i see a squirrel track they're coming up on the camera here now. What other tracks do I see? I see some little paw tracks. That could be Kevin's dog. He's got a little mini poodle type dog. I don't see any tracks here. And you know what? I actually don't even see the raccoon. The raccoon's gone. I don't see it at all. Those are squirrel tracks. You can see that's a little couple little paws here definitely squirrel track and come over here now that carcass was I believe it was right here I don't see anything for reference there's the trail camera and I know we had it right on the trail camera oh wait I see some tracks here older tracks we've had a big thaw and some rain so wasn't really expecting to see too many tracks but it's good to see some squirrel tracks and some old they look like dog tracks there's some squirrel tracks over there so the only real way to know what happened to the carcass we know it worked we know it was successful the only way we can 100 percent know what happened is of course by consulting the trail camera so Let's uh, we'll switch it off first, and switch it back on, and then we can open up the menu here. Let's go to, go to view. What's nice about this camera, this is the, the spy point camera. What's nice about it is it actually has a display right on it, so you can get a live 
replay of exactly what's been happening on the camera. So we have 17 events it tells us. We can scroll back. We've got some nighttime ones, some daytime ones. I'm going to go right back to the start. So that's number 17. Okay. So it's a little tricky for me to hold the camera and do this all at the same time. And you're not going to get a full view of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the camera right now. I'll take it back home. And then from home, I'll be able to load these all on my computer. And we can have a look at them. And then you guys can see exactly what happened. And we can get to and give you some feedback on what the, experiment, uh, the results of this experiment were. And I've also got some really cool uh, other trail camera footage that I've collected over the years that I want to share with you. Some really interesting stuff that you would only get if you put a trail camera out in the woods. All right, guys, let's go see what's on the camera. Well, I'm excited to share this footage with you. I've already seen it, so I know exactly what we're going to see. But Holden doesn't know the results of the experiment as you guys don't know the results of the experiment. So he's all wired in. He's going to be able to hear the sounds from the trail camera without getting any feedback. And you guys are going to be able to see the footage as well. So um, I'll just toss it out there. What do you guys think came in and ate it? It was completely gone, as you guys know. Holden, what do you think came and ate it? You got a guess? Birds, probably. You think birds? They're only seeing birds because they have it open already and you can see a bird sitting on it. Do you have any other I guesses? Know, maybe like a wolf or something? You think, we don't have wolves around here. I don't know. Okay, so it's not a wolf. Maybe another raccoon? Or, yeah, possibly. it could be. Caught, could be possibly another raccoon could have gone. Raccoons are in hibernation now. Uh, for the most part, they will come out and stretch the legs, so it's a possibility. Do you have any other guesses? I'll tell you it got completely eaten. Okay, yeah. some, something came and completely ate the... Okay, you came back and you saw it, it was yeah, completely saw, gone. Well, so I, when I was there, there was still some of it, but... Some of it, it yeah. Was, most of it was gone. Okay, well, I'm telling you, it was 100% gone. Okay, so something so came like, and ate the whole thing. So, like, during the video, it's going to start getting disappeared? It, no, you're going to see what animal took it. Okay? Uh, okay. Are you ready? Okay. okay, let's start the footage, and uh, you guys follow along, too. Okay, so there's the chickadee right there. Yeah, look at it. It's sitting on top it, of the fur. It just, it's a... You see what it's doing? It's picking little bits it's of... It's eating it. Yeah, it's eating it. Little... Uh, it's it just viewed in on it. That, that's weird. So it's eating... It's keep, it's keep eating it. It's like it's bird food. Yeah, except it's not. <laughs> it's not bird food. Oh, oh there's a there's a red squirrel. A red squirrel, and I think I think what comes next is what you're actually what actually ate it. So get ready. Okay, like the red the red. Oh, he didn't eat it. I don't think he ate he any. He didn't eat. Oh. Like what? A fox. Yeah, it's a fox. Oh. <laughs> well, he's, he's just sniffing it, right? Well, he he just sniffed it, and then, like, he's eating a bit of it. Yeah, what's he doing? He he's not eat. He didn't eat any of it. No, he didn't eat any. He didn't yet. eat it. He didn't eat any. I think what he's doing now is like he's making sure it's safe. So he's kind of sniffing like he's... Because he thinks there might be a bigger predator that killed it. Yeah, it could be like a coyote nearby or something. He doesn't want to mess around with it. Like so he's, he's just nipping it. Oh, there, there. There we go. Yeah, he's right in there now. So if you remember, this raccoon was sitting there as a whole thing, a whole block of ice before. And nothing took it. It was there oh, for two he weeks. He can't bite it. Longer than two weeks, four weeks. It was there for four weeks and nothing ever disturbed it. So he, this is... He can't even eat it. It's like stuck. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, he got them. I didn't show you, but I put spikes into the ground. Oh. I put like big metal spikes so it couldn't just grab it. Because the, the first instinct this animal has is to take it and drag it off into the forest where it can be safe to eat it. So it doesn't want to eat it out in the open. See how unalert it is? Its ears are pointing forward. It doesn't. It doesn't want it's to stay eating, in the open. Oh, jeez! It's eating all of it. <laughs> it, it might. It might just be the fox that eats all of it. Do you it. think the fox eats the whole thing? Maybe. You think it wants that whole meal? Like, would that be a good meal like for it a fox? It come back, back. It come back a bunch of times. It could come back a bunch of times. Yeah, for sure. So look at that big hunk of meat. Yeah, it keeps doing that. It keeps pulling off big hunks, but it can't chew them. Can you imagine if you're an animal and you couldn't use a knife? Like the, be kind of annoying. It would be annoying because especially if you had like a big raccoon. Yeah, a big raccoon. Frozen solid. Yeah, frozen in the winter. How could you eat it? You couldn't. I don't know. You couldn't. But because the, I used the axe on it and broke it up into small pieces, then that that uh, that fox can go in there now. And he seems to keep moving back. It's kind of weird. 
He's trying to swallow it. That's a big yeah. piece for him to swallow, but he really wants to swallow it. And he's, he's gonna. Like, he's he's try. He keeps trying. <laughs> he's gonna swallow that thing whole. At least he'll try. Yeah, look at him. He keeps trying. He's got to work pretty hard to get that that chunk of meat in there. All right, guys. So it looks like obviously the fox was the big benefactor of me mashing that raccoon up with an axe. What yeah, do you think about that? It, all it was is the chickadee that did the other bit. Yeah, chickadee and the squirrel wasn't interested. No. The squirrel just like walked around it a bit. So this is me going out hunting, and then this is me coming back. Do you think I had a good time hunting out there in the snow? Yeah. Do you know what I forgot on this hunt? That looks so creepy. <laughs> I forgot my gloves. My hands are frozen that hunt. <laughs> Look at all the snow. I forgot my mitts. Fawns are fighting. Are all those bucks? Those don't look like bucks. No, they don't look like bucks, do they? But you're right, there are fawns. What kind of fawns uh, do you think they are? They're probably bucks, young duck, well, young bucks. Yeah, yeah. Young buck fawns. They're getting ready to. A spar. Look at <laughs> <laughs> This is cool. They're like they're like little boys play fighting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Except they're actually fighting. There's a little buck. Yeah, it just it just sting. What's that? That's a coyote, right? Yeah, it's a coyote. What's he doing? He probably just peed. He might have peed, yeah. And he's rubbing the pee on his legs. Or maybe he's... A what? You know, sometimes these coyotes, what they do is they find deer sign, like poo, and they rub their paws in the poo to hide their scent. There's another... There's another one. Yeah, there's another coyote. See, that's what I was expecting to get uh, for the raccoon, was actually a coyote coming. Because there's yeah. a lot more coyotes than foxes. The fox is pretty happy to get it, I'm sure. A couple deer here. Yeah, big, uh, big bunch of weary deer. I included this clip because I want to show you how weary they are. They, they, they know where the camera is. They're sniffing for it. They're always on alert. He's, he sees it. Yeah, the bottom one sees it. He's got his ears on alert. He's looking at the camera, and the ones in the back are, are paying attention to other things that are going on. Like they're, they're looking at other things. Yeah. And there's a, there's a buck. He actually has antlers. Yeah. See how he's got his ears kind of looking around. He's look. That one's Fleming. He's got his nose curled up so he can smell it. He's looking for a doe. There's another big buck. There's one. Nicky knows the camera's there? Probably. Yeah. What do you notice about this guy? He knows the camera's he, there. He definitely knows the camera's there. Yeah. Oh, he's eating. He's <laughs> eating. The buck's eating. He's not eating though. You know what he's doing? He's rubbing his oh, he's rubbing scent glands from his eyes. He's running from something. <laughs> what do you think he's running away from? Because deer don't usually run like that, right? Probably somebody scared it. Yeah. A person probably scared it, or a There's farmer. So this one's interesting. Okay, so we're gonna have to be quiet a little bit, but you tell me when you start to hear a buck make a noise. I, I hear it, it's like. Yeah, yeah, so, so be quiet and listen here. Tell me when he starts again, because I can't hear it, only you can hear it. He does a really long, drawn out grunt. Yeah, I did that at the start. Okay, but he'll go. He goes for like, he goes for like six minutes grunting. Listen. Yeah, he's doing it now. Listen. Is he doing stuff? No. He stopped? Okay, so tell me when he starts again. Oh, he's doing it now. He's doing it now. Okay, so let's skip forward here. Okay, so these, uh, this next bunch of clips are from Texas. Oh, okay. So we're gonna have Texas. That's a long time ago. It's a, it was not in the summer. Yeah. Right, in the spring. So you guys can think about what kind of animals, you can think about what kind of animals you expect to see. What are you expecting to see on the trail camera? The snake maybe. A snake, okay, let's see. Well, a snake wouldn't trigger because it's not warm. So let's see. Some hogs. <laughs> <laughs> A few hogs. Yeah, there's, there's... Seems like it's going in fast motion, but they run fast. No, they're sketchy like that. They're always like super, super agitated. They're like... Okay, that's, there's only one left. Chased, oh, there's two now. Chase the other one away. They're, looking, they're always looking for food. 
They're rooting all the time, looking for whatever food they can find. They're probably looking for mulberries there. What's what, that? A animal? horse? What is it? A horse. <laughs> it's a horse. It's a horse. Yeah. That's probably uh, doesn't know the trail cameras there, or else it wouldn't be that close. No, I was curious about the live cage, the live trap there. That's uh, Bob Hanser's horse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were, there's, I, the hogs there's some again. more hogs. We were, I was worried that the horses would have to actually set the cages off, so we had to keep checking to make sure that they didn't set them off. Yeah. So there's some hogs. We saw so many hogs there. We. What's that? There's a skunk in the cage. <laughs> That was He's like, help me, I need to get out, yeah. help, help. Trying to push against the door. Yeah, I don't, it's not going to do anything. How do you think I got the, the uh, skunk out of the cage? I don't know. No, I There's had, a doe. I had to shoot it. <laughs> There's yeah. a doe. That's a doe, yeah. yeah. Did, did you one. notice anything different about these deer compared to our deer? Well, they have skinnier legs. Yeah, they're, they're smaller. And they're smaller, yeah. Yeah, they're a smaller deer. They're 100%. Our deer are way bigger. Yeah, it definitely sees the camera. Yeah, he and noticed the bugs. camera. He didn't want to be... What's that? That's an armadillo, right? <laughs> yeah. Did you see the bug? Yeah. Yeah, I, I replayed this again so you could see it. It's an armadillo. Yeah. That's pretty neat. There's a raccoon. <laughs> it's, Did, like, it's like, it's like, like walk into the side. <laughs> what is that? What is it? An emu? Not an emu. I have no idea what you that is. You don't know what it is? We have those around here too. A peacock? Do you notice it's got know. a big long beard? I have no idea. What you don't it know is. what it is? A turkey? It's a turkey. It's really obese. <laughs> it just it's looks really big. Fat. <laughs> yeah, that's a, like, like, a. That's a massive turkey. It's a gobbler. Yeah, it's getting a drink. The water is super important in Texas. Like the the animals have to get water all the time because yeah, it's so the end of it's the so warm. Video. Yeah, so that's the end of the video, guys. That's uh, a collection of my highlights over the years. Um, results of the experiment was kind of interesting. So we, we, I don't really like to say you prove things in science, but we did, we did run an experiment. I had the raccoon out as a whole body, frozen yeah. solid, and as a nothing, chunk. Nothing happened for no, so long. Nothing came in. I think it was three or four weeks. Like a month? I think a month. Yeah, it was about that. Nothing ever happened to it. Nothing so happened. So we came up with an idea. I was going to, I was going to break it up into small pieces and put a trail camera on it. Yeah. So. So what we found was that if an, a, an animal can't make use of a whole frozen animal, another animal, dead animal. Except ah. for dragging it away, but you, could, you wouldn't let it drag it away. Right. It could probably drag it away and then maybe hide it until it thawed out in the spring and take little bits off and work away at it. But yeah. obviously if, if an animal could make use of tools like we could and break it apart into small pieces, it would be... You know, it would do a lot better It'd in do life. A lot better, exactly. Yeah, because it can make use of those calories right away. Mm -hmm. So instead I was, of waiting for them. Instead of waiting for them, exactly. Yeah. So humans have a big advantage over animals in that we can break it, animals up into small pieces uh, and use them right away using knives, knives, axes, axes, axes like you did, whatever, uh, whatever. Chainsaw. If it's really frozen. <laughs> chainsaw. Yeah, and then also on top of that, we can use cooking. And yeah. cooking makes and it cooking makes, makes it easier to eat. Easier to eat, yeah, exactly, because it can break apart a lot easier. Um, you can break it apart with your hands. You can boil meat so that it gets so tender you don't even need to chew it, right? And it tastes a lot better. And it, ta <laughs> it tastes a lot better to us, that's for sure. I wonder if an animal would prefer a cooked. That might be another. No, you know. Yeah, know? that might be a test. It might be a test. Like like we cooked do piece like of meat like versus... we do like a raccoon like a raccoon with like like skin to no hair and then just a bunch of meat from it yeah um and then some cooked meat a uh, cooked raccoon meat beside it that would be interesting that to would see be interesting which one yeah. disappeared first mm -hmm. and i think one of the mistakes maybe on this experiment is like maybe um by breaking it up into pieces it smelled uh, more potent so an animal could find it easier right yeah. versus if it's frozen all in one chunk maybe it didn't smell as much yeah so but still i i still don't think it would like not as much would be gone but yeah well for sure absolutely yeah. it definitely could consume it faster with broken up to pieces mm -hmm. if you guys like this um segment if you guys really like this trail camera experiment let us know if you wanted to continue another one i have another one in mind so if you guys really like the trail camera stuff and you want to see us do another one um i'd be interested in doing it would you yeah yeah was it fun mm -hmm. it was an interesting experiment right yeah all right guys we'll see you later you guys can subscribe to the channel 
I don't care if you subscribe to the channel, but that doesn't mean I don't care about you. Um, you can subscribe to Holden, he cares. But he doesn't have a channel. <laughs> Alright guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>